I'm Shauna Golden. I'm the editorial assistant at NOSH. I'm here at Expo East, and I'm joined by Rip Pruskin of Rip Van. Um, thanks for letting me stop by today. Thanks for coming. Can you tell our audience a little bit about the brand and how it came about? Sure. So I started the company in college at Brown University. And together with Marco, my co-founder, we started making Stroopwafels. Stroopwafels are a delicacy in the Netherlands. They're a thin waffle cookie with a caramel filling. We thought of bringing the product over to the U.S. and um, that's how we started. And from there we grew. All right. And I know you sort of, you brought it over to the U.S. and made it a lower sugar version. What was sort of the vision behind that and the consumer you were trying to appeal to? So, you know, honestly, it, it was a kind of a personal impact thing. We uh, were wondering how could we have an impact through our company and we thought, you know, sugar is a major problem. And if you look at the cookies that are out there, they're loaded with sugar. And we're like, why is that the case? And so we started working on developing low sugar doughs, creams to figure out, can we deliver on great taste while reducing the sugar level substantially? And it took us a while to get there but now we have a product that has three grams of sugar, and if you compare it to the conventional Stroopwafel, it's 12, so it's significantly lower. And I know you've um, recently expanded your portfolio, and because of that, the name has changed from Rip Van Waffle to just Rip Van. Um, can you sort of elaborate a little bit on that and tell us about the new products that are coming up? Totally, so, um, so with this dough and syrup technology, we realized that, you know, not only could we make soup waffles, but we could apply that to you know sugar wafers, sandwich cookies, and many many other snack forms. So we're super excited. We launched Rip Van wafers um, a couple of months ago, and offline. And um, next year we're launching a low sugar sandwich cookie. So 70, 80 percent less sugar than the leading brand. And so we're super excited to bring that to market. We're also going to be working on bringing a number of other snacks that also have this low sugar benefit to market soon. Very cool. And so sort of what does this uh, portfolio expansion, I guess, mean for the brand? Um, how do these new products expand on what you already have? So I think, you know, the, the cookies in the U.S. are a staple in the household. Whether, you know, you're a busy professional, you're a mom, parent, whether you're an empty nester, a senior citizen, I mean, cookies are part of the American zeitgeist. And unfortunately, cookies being loaded with sugar end up you know, delivering multiple pounds of sugar in someone's body. Um, and this, this is not only young people, this is all across the board. And so if we can reduce that sugar content by 70, 80%, while still deliver that nostalgic, amazing experience of having the cookie you love, that's awesome. So that's what we're really trying to do. And we're trying to make a product that's appealing for a very broad demographic. And that's why we're trying to make it taste really good um, while reducing the sugar. That's great. And um, can you talk a little bit, I know the brand has a large omni-channel approach sort of strategy. Um, can you talk a bit a little about that and then appealing to both um, natural retailers and conventional? How does that kind of work for you guys? Yeah, so I think there are two main things. One is we really need to test the product out with consumers first to understand whether the value proposition, the promise we're trying to deliver on great taste and lower sugar um, is something that is resonating, right? Is it good enough that they want to have this product on a regular basis? And so we really start online with new innovation and then we slowly bring that offline and we bring it offline omni-channel once we have the confidence that's an item we can really bring to market. So for example, you know, the Rip Van wafers are now number one in their category on Amazon, and so we're confident that we can bring that product offline. And similarly, Leo's are following suit. So, you know, I think we're taking a pretty systematic approach. Um, if you look at the, the Rip Van waffles, those have obviously been around a cross-channel for a while. We've build, been building our distribution so the idea is to basically follow that same omni-channel approach once we were like, okay, the next item, the next product's ready to launch. Awesome. And so uh, beyond new products, what's sort of next for the brand in the near future? So I think, you know, team is being a big part. You know, Mark and I bootstrapped the business um, and really wore every hat. Um, but it's amazing to 
be part of a bigger team and, and we really foresee building out the team across every vertical to have like a fully fledged CPG uh, team um, to, to grow the business. So I think, I think that's very gratifying to be part of a team that's trying to have this impact and, and, and grow the company across the U.S. Thank you so much for your time today and taking a minute to speak with us. It was great to learn about the brand. Awesome. Thanks for coming.